this is Civic Space TV. Welcome to Women at the Frontlines program where we bring to you women leaders impacting our society. And today we have Madame Fiona Wall Navasa, uh, the immediate former president of Uganda Law Society here in Uganda. A great woman indeed in our country, in the legal fraternity and beyond. And I'm so delighted to be hosting her today. Fiona, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for giving us your time. Thank you very much. We are so it's, honored. It's lovely to be here. Really? It's, like, it's a great environment. Very, very happy yeah. to receive you. Yeah. And privilege, of course, to honor. And nice to see you again, an old friend. <laughs> <laughs> I am so honored. I'm so, so happy. Thank you. I didn't think you'd come. but Why? Uh, <laughs> looking at your profile and the, the things you do, you seem to be very busy very busy yes mm. but i think one of the most important things about our lives is the ability to tell our stories mm -hmm. and inspire others mm -hmm. but also um sometimes the more you, you shine your light on, um, on what god has done for you the more grateful you become the more grateful <laughs> and of course also the and more humble. things god does oh yeah yes. humble yes. more humble yes all right, so this space is really about leadership and leadership, more leaders, more women in yes. various spaces. So just like to capture your leadership journey, your leadership impact, <laughs> and of course, uh, what you can share with our viewership in terms of doing more, impacting society, basically. Yeah. yeah. So we'd like to walk with you in that journey and picking out some highlights in terms of uh, those leadership traits, values, wow. lessons, things that can inspire another yeah. woman leader yeah yeah so good start from there <laughs> well i don't know where to start but <laughs> i'll just say that uh, leadership is is not born but there are certain things like building blocks that mm -hmm. happen to a human being when they're growing up mm -hmm. uh, it's a mixture of passion it's a mixture of availing yourself it's a mixture of opportunity opportunity yes. as well mm. But also challenges. Um, somebody said necessity breeds invention. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing like stress or strife or pressure to, to bring out the diamond in you. Eh? Ah. So mm. I think for me, it's a combination of all those things. It's a combination of all those things. Uh, when I was a child, I was very opinionated. Highly. And impetuous. <laughs> so you could have said I was a natural leader because I was always trying to teach people something. Mm, mm. I was always leading people into trouble. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> but, I, didn't, uh, I didn't see that yes. about you. But then um, when I got into my teenage years, I became a total introvert and, mm -hmm. and which was, you know, so I, I, I think that um, my view of leadership has always been it's, it's never been something I volunteer for, but it's need driven. It's for instance, need. when you feel that mm. there's a hunger in you to, to cause something when I hate injustice. Mm -hmm. So every time mm -hmm. there was, there's something that needed fixing. You are right there yeah, on time. My friends always say that I'm so good at defending everyone else but myself, <laughs> which is really funny. <laughs> so you need a defender as well. Yeah, I need defenders. Okay. But uh, the, the, the thing that happened to me in my life was that there were a lot of um, detours. I'm very opinionated mm -hmm. and I thought at every point I thought I knew where I wanted to go. Oh. And many places, many times I didn't get the chance to go there. Okay. I had, for me, a large part of my life has been led. I had many leaders. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my parents were very opinionated about where I should go. Where head. you should. So and I you... wanted to do medicine. Yeah. They literally pushed me into law and then I got into law school and I loved it you loved and then it. I get out and I think I want to be a lawyer mm -hmm. and the first job I get is uh, being in charge of uh, an NGO called Candlelight Foundation rehabilitating girls mm -hmm. from the streets mm -hmm. and I fall in love with it but then that also seemed like a forced detour you know um, I'll tell you something funny I, I did an interview to be a state attorney and uh, you know those moments when you're walking the streets <laughs> and I we did an interview with five other guys and I was the only female the only female I was going to ask you that so when mm. they asked us to go pick our letters 
the guy who had our letters asked me out. <laughs> and and I just I couldn't and I remember leaving and not being given my letter and going home mm -hmm. and being totally broken because of that incident yes. yeah yeah but yeah. then out of the blue during that time a phone call came from a, uh, somebody that I had done research for at university mm. who was now heading an NGO wow. and he's like Come, come, come! Manage this NGO mm -hmm, for us. Mm -hmm, he was the board chair, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so that's how the job came. So I found myself in social work, <laughs> and then one day I'm I'm walking up Makere. I get a I get an I meet a friend of mine like you, and, uh -huh. and she says, "Do you want a job? I've just left my job. Can I can come you take over? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I did the interview and became the secretary for National Association of Broadcasters, which was advocacy. It was the beginning of my life in advocacy. <laughs> Uh, it was for fighting for media houses mm -hmm. and, and things mm -hmm. like that. Is that where you started the career of uh, public relations? Because in your profile, it seems you've done quite a lot it has of has been things. a theme. Yeah. A bit of, because mm. that day when I did the interview, one of the people that did the interview with me was Honorable Maria Chuanuka. She asked me to work in Radio 1. Is that so? Yeah. <laughs> After that interview, she had me do a voice test and I started doing the morning show. Just like that. <laughs> Just like that. But it wasn't that easy. It's mm. one of the things that I failed at because I was so self conscious. <laughs> okay. And, and you so wanted to be so perfect and everything. Yeah. Plus, there's also that dichotomy of now I'm a DJ. Mm -hmm. Am I supposed to be a the lawyer? lawyer and, there's you so know. much. Yeah. Yeah. So I feel like that's one of the places I failed because mm -hmm. I quit mm -hmm. <laughs> after mm -hmm. about six mm -hmm. months. Mm -hmm. um, I think I disappointed my mentor then, although she stayed my boss. Ah. So. Those were some of my leaders, oh, yeah. and, and one of the messages I learned from that time was because I was the secretary to the board, mm, mm. and this organization was for media houses. For media and that houses. time, yeah. they started locking up media houses at that the time. Broadcasting council. It's been consistent. And then I had to fight mm. for that. For and I remember rights. being scared and mm. going to my bosses, and Honorable Maria would say, "The buck stops with you." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go fix it. Go like, fix do it. not come and give me a story of failure. Or don't come to me to tell me a problem. Mm -hmm. Give me solutions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She was one mm -hmm. of the people that really, you know, drove me to do that. Okay. So I'd go and, and I'd find evidence and somehow, you know, and, and then, you know, we get like KFM opened up because we've... You advocated. We've, yeah. Wow. So that started my life in advocacy. But also knowing that there were these big... Uh, the captains of industry mm. behind me and they believed mm. in me as mm. a little mm. girl mm. but mm. they believed that I could add, I could speak for them you the know? role of mentorship as exactly well. yeah, so yeah. They, so mm. they poured into my life they yes. poured their resources mm. uh, I, I met uh, Kin Carissa then uh, one of one of them was honorable oh there were so many so I don't many. want to name all of yeah, them yeah. I don't yeah. want to embarrass them but mm. they contributed a lot to my leadership journey because I worked there for five years uh -huh. So during those five years, I got a teaching job as well at KIU, which grew me. Really? Teaching law students was difficult, especially mature students. I actually saw you in students. a law class at LDC one time. Yeah, I yeah. used to also teach at LDC because I, I was doing some voluntary work at Legal Aid Clinic okay. Okay. <clears throat> in uh, LDC. Mm. Another mentor, Theo Webale. Hmm? I remember I, my first case, I was in fourth year, I was volunteering. And this Hajati comes and she's over 50 and she has a problem with her husband. And then her husband comes and they start fighting in the, not right fighting literally, in, but yeah. Uh, before you. My grandparents are fighting before me. <laughs> <laughs> he is so a I ran girl. out of the room and went to, to Theo and I told her, How I don't know what to do. This? She said, go fix it. She wow. said, you don't leave people in the room together. They'll kill each other. Wow. Go fix it. Wow. And that, that, that looking at her and and, and, and the way she was convinced that I could fix it, mm, mm. made me go in there mm, mm. <laughs> and do the first mediation of my life. And they walked out holding hands, actually. Wow. It wasn't that easy, I it can tell you. We spoke easy. for hours. Mm, but mm, mm. Um, it also opened me up to the complexities of marriage mm -hmm. and, and family, and, family mm. and how these so-called legal issues all have psychosocial issues behind them. Wow. And, and unless you solve those, then the legal issues will never will go never away. Be out. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. so that was my journey. Mm. Uh, fast forward, I get a job in National Water, and I think, yeah, now I can practice law. Settle down properly. and do my law. Settle down, get married, <laughs> have kids. What? 
And then after about three years of doing some serious consistently goa, mm. I'm told, ah, you have to... Oh, but those three years were years of innovation. National Water was going through many, many changes. Mm. One of the changes that happened uh, when I just worked there two years was um, phasing out cash offices. We used to have cash offices in National All Water. All over the place. Okay. And, oh. and that brings problems. Mm -hmm. There's theft, mm -hmm. there's temptations, mm -hmm. there's things. Corruption. So and all what that. happened mm -hmm. is they decided to phase out the cash offices and I was in the commercial department so I was asked to be among the people who would write the concept, chase it out. We were not popular, I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> when you are changing we were things, not popular, transforming yes. things, certainly. Yes. Mm. And uh, around that point we lost our PR manager mm. suddenly may mm. her soul rest in Sorry. eternal peace mm. but she's she was also a mentor that I had uh, started to follow she was very tough so so very few people related with her but I love tough people because my mom is really tough yeah 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 <laughs> so I used to volunteer with her so when she passed away they asked me to head PR and then I was like, oh my God, I don't know anything. Anything, anything. at all, yeah. But I, I, I already had a habit of learning. It sitting comes at natural feet, with you, right? Asking for help. Mm -hmm. No, what I mean is asking for help comes natural with me right. always. So mm -hmm. the first thing I did was, again, I, I, I keep telling people that um, God equips those that avail themselves. Because uh -huh. I did try to get out of that job but my boss has let me know that was the only job available ah, so mm. I sat in this on this desk and I saw two numbers the late um, Miriam who passed away had put two numbers on uh, you know on her desk, desk. Mm. and there were two numbers and there were two Helens I didn't know which Helen was which but I knew these people must have something to do with PR so I called <laughs> the first one I called I said hi my name is Fiona I'm now working in Miriam's place. And so I was like, oh, hi, I'm Helen from Parliament. What oh, do you need? I'm like, I need help. Okay. Then she mentored. She said, first of all, let's meet. Let's meet and I take you to Prow. Wow. you find mentors there. Kawesa. Helen Kawesa. One of the best. I accord her my, my, you know, my journey in PR. In the country, yes. So now when she took me to Prow, I found another mentor. I'd met mm. in Namagunga, mm. uh, Sheila Kangwaje, who also became a, you know, a mentor. Mm. Uh, but I remember my first media crisis, I decided, oh, I've never called the second Helen. Let me call her. The second Helen was Helen Muchivi, New Vision. Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> and she was so generous. I told her I have a media crisis. I don't know where to begin. Mm. And she was able to give me the contacts mm. of media, mm. media contacts mm. and, you know, take me through how to do a press release. You know. and, and, and she's still there doing gorgeous work. And uh, for me, <laughs> those are the women that have fixed my crown wow. you know through yeah, yeah, through time yeah yeah, yeah. and uh, i think sheila engineered my being appointed pr director of prow mm. uh, because i i didn't even stand for that you didn't position see that study, but it happened you know yeah public relations yeah mm. but uh, so so doing pr in national water was a place of leadership right. we had a football team mm -hmm. that i had to lead mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm very proud of Water FC. Then we had, we were doing the e-water. We launched e-water. E mm -hmm. It was the first time, you know, I was able to put our brand on social media. National wow. Water was the first person on social media. 2009, I'm that 2009. old. 2009. And what I like about that journey was that I knew nothing At about all. social media. <laughs> so I met a fantastic guy called Boaz Shani, a very, very passionate man who walked into my office and said, I want to teach you about social media. I said, really, please. <laughs> he was running uh, Yugo Uganda. It's, a, it's, a, it's an online platform. And, and he taught me everything there is, everything I know up to this day about wow. social media marketing. Wow. Wow. And wow. that's another mentor. You know, so I came across something. It's, it's been bricks and... And... and, and, and yeah. broken pieces as yeah you just, know, just coming together, together like a jigsaw puzzle wow yours yes. is a unique story and yeah. i think we'll talk more a little about that but when i was reading about your pr experience it was just a weird comment somewhere on on, on, on social media which yeah. was saying you know fiona is is, is just you know it, it's about the looks in public oh, relations wow. she's just <laughs> gifted and she's all put together and uh, the reason why she has done well in public relations is because maybe she gets those fixes here and there because of her looks. Wow. <laughs> is that no, but really... Women always have get these comments. Mm. I mean, we have a lot of good-looking men who have excelled in life. We don't say it's because of I their know. look. 
Um, I will tell you, I'm already telling you that mm. every bit of um, success I've had, mm. it's been someone pulling me from pulling up. Pulling you from up. And it was not because I was pretty. Yeah. I mean, I didn't date the women that mm -hmm. you've heard about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's been a lot of women in my journey. I know. I didn't <laughs> date the men I've told you about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, um, some of my relationships with some of my greatest mentors started with fights, you know. Mm. And uh, one of the things I will say is, I think I would say my journey in PR was made easy because I was teachable. Teachable, I was going to say that. I was that. dying to yeah, be taught. just to learn. You know, people job. in PR mm -hmm. have, are, are big and they know it and, and, you know, and it's not good for you to show your back mm. or show your vulnerable side mm. or show that there's something you're lacking. Mm -hmm. So I think I was quite unique coming and saying, guys, I know nothing. I know nothing. So you so learn from had, everyone Yeah, else. so they, they didn't even have shots to shoot at me. I'd already shot and cut myself. Yeah, yeah. So I think, be humble. Mm -hmm. Ask for help. Yes. People are good. I always tell people that uh, human beings have a proclivity to be good. Absolutely. Uh, there's a cartoon that my children like to watch where this this bad street dog, you know, meets another dog and the dog wags his tail and he's like, what What happens? Then this guy is like, no, whenever I do something good, my my tail wags and I feel wonderful. Wow. I know that's a very funny wow. example. Yeah. But I feel that when you do something good for someone without payment, without just because they've asked for help mm -hmm. it, it it does something on the inside on of the you. inside of you and i think i used to give people that feeling <laughs> when they would help me um so i can tell you that a lot of people feel like they are part of my success uh -huh. even when i was running for president so a everyone... lot of people felt this was mm. their thing mm. not mine mm. Mm. um mm. i've never been the kind of person you can say ah fiona is fit is Perfect in perfect this and, in this and no. Okay. But I've always been the person who will come uh -huh. and ask for help. Wow. Yeah. That's very important. So I think mm. that in, if you want to be a leader, you need to identify who do you want to lead like? Mm -hmm. Who do you follow? You mm. cannot lead unless you have followed somewhere. At least. Because you're, when, you're lead, when you're following, mm -hmm. you're reaping. Mm. Mm. You're, sorry, you're sowing you're seeds. You're sowing seeds behind you. So, so if you don't is sow a follower. seeds mm. of being teachable, mm -hmm. of being humble, mm. of of respecting your elders. Others I know this generation don't want to hear that. <laughs> no one will respect you. Yes. No yes. one will respect you. I don't Honor. know how it happens, but I've seen it. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's if you don't give room to the leaders in your life to lead you, you, it will be very hard mm. for you to reap anything you didn't plant. Wow. And I think that. Um, one of the most amazing things that has happened to me is to go everywhere for help, have a long journey, you know, and then you become president and you realize that all the people who have been part of your journey are now big people in different, in places, different places and you need favors and from them. them. And when you go to them, they feel that helping you is their obligation. It, yes, but duty. they also feel like it also helps them. Wow. Because you have always given them the credit mm -hmm. they deserved mm. in your life. Mm. So. Give credit, be wow. teachable, be humble. It wow. takes away nothing from you. Wow. And and then it makes your journey more authentic. Mm -hmm. I mean, nobody can wake up and say, hi, I grew up and I just became a leader. I don't just know how. Just like that. That's, I don't know. It's a journey. I don't relate to those stories. It's a journey. It's a <laughs> yes. journey. It's a journey of, you know, so as you PR, have So mm. PR comes naturally to me. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a, what is it called? I'm a sanguine. Uh -huh. But PR takes discipline okay it's a very tough job mm -hmm. it's a very tough job to sell a brand it's a very tough job to to get the media to write the right story to About believe your in brand. your brand mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's a very tough job when i went to airtel we had to uh, we were doing the merger with worried uh, the takeover and the worried customer was completely different from the airtel customer Total. of Celtel days mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so to to get this worried customer to say I am going I'm to buy a, an Airtel SIM card. Okay. That took a lot. A lot it's of work. A lot of hard work. Mm, mm. And we had a huge <coughs> marketing team behind it. I think we I'm one so of those clients who it. failed to transit. You know, I need to work <laughs> on you. So, so the thing is, when, when PR is a profession. It is. You have to be professional. You have to be part of your professional membership mm -hmm. uh, to become relevant. Mm. That's what I did. I joined Prow. Mm. I had an imposter syndrome, I'd not studied PR, 
uh, but I remember going to Prague and saying, what can I contribute? Yeah. I'm a lawyer. So I said, oh, we, we can come up with a PR bill, you know? And, okay, and, and something like something the Law like Society that. Act. Yeah, yeah. So I helped mm. draft that. Mm. Mm. And one of the things that uh, I love about the guys in, P in Prao was that they were welcoming. They wanted new blood. They wow. wanted new ideas. Wow. wow. So avail yourself to serve. Mm -hmm. Organizations like QLS and Prao mm. do not pay salaries. I hope people know that. Go to your professional organization and serve. And, and serve. while you're serving, mm. someone will see you. You'll be noticed. Someone will mm. Mm. encourage you. Yeah. You will get a skill. Yes. You will get a exposed. recommendation. Mm. Yes. You'll mm. get a voice. Yeah. You you get a voice to the point that um, you you write something small and it it. It blows out of proportion. Wow. Yeah. Wow. You've had quite a number of passions in life, and I think I noted that. And uh, yeah, some of these are, are scattered in different places. And of course, for somebody who is reading your profile and listening to you right now, maybe they, they, they fail to pick the who Fiona is yeah. really in all these passions. She's all over the place. Yeah, but what's the advantage of having, pursuing all these passions, you know, and skills at the same time? Okay, so mm. I love life, mm -hmm. I love people, and I love God. Mm -hmm. um, that can make you a little scattered <laughs> because, but also being a young person in Uganda, jobs don't come easy. They don't come easy. So if you're told to do a job that's outside your line mm -hmm. and that's the only one available, you do it. Mm. So mm. I always tell people, Togaya Milimu. Togaya <laughs> Milimu, yes, here. yes. The second thing is work. Hard. Work hard, 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 hard. hard. Uh, the, the thing with me is when I decide I am going this way, I go there with all, all of, of you. Then I take my family, I Everyone take my friends, else. I take, uh -huh. I always convert everybody into whatever I am doing. Wow. Uh, my dad used to say I could sell sun to an Arab, so maybe I'm a natural seller. You are. But, uh, convincing one. Yes. Mm. <laughs> Thanks. Mm. But about passions, sometimes. If you are like me and you've ended up doing many things and it doesn't add up, um, you need to know that it's not the jobs that define you. It's the skills that you're getting from all these experiences. It's the skills that you're getting, the people you're meeting, because your net worth ah, is when your, you're young yes. is your network. It is your Who network. Do you know? Who do you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the people I met in NAB when I was young in the media houses uh -huh. are the ones who helped me out when I became PR manager. Absolutely. You know? Yes. Suddenly we could get sponsorships for proud events uh -huh. because uh -huh. I knew people. You knew somebody you know? somewhere. And mm -hmm. then you become a cool proud director, you know, a PR director, because you. You've done a fantastic event and it's been funded. Mm -hmm. In law society, we've had two consecutive annual law conferences. And the colleagues I have worked with in the legal profession mm. have been the ones who have convinced their organizations to sponsor these conferences. Imagine. So your network is your network. Your network. Mm -hmm. Along the way, it doesn't matter what you're doing. Mm -hmm. What relationships are you building? Are you building? What skills mm -hmm. are you learning? Mm -hmm. what, who's, whose lives are you changing? Are you changing? I think for me that also is very important. That's very, very important. I am very purpose driven. Uh -huh. I, if I don't feel that I add value to something, mm. I get bored easily. Mm. Mm. I will scatter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I think I've been very fortunate. I have bosses that know this and every two or three years they give me something new to do. That's something why I've worked and in fresh. National Water for almost 15 <laughs> years now. And still there. Yeah. But doing something different There's at another something season. Different. Oh, yeah. Yes. Well, I, I am so impressed. When I was just reading your profile, I was like, wow, how is she able to do this? Okay, before we go into another, uh, you know, issue, I, I yeah. just want to capture your life in, in the legal profession because that's where most of us know you from. Yes. And of course, when you won that election, we we're like, wow, it was a fresh breath of air. Of Thank course, you. having a woman there yes. and one with a public relations background, it all felt like, wow, this is a beautiful <laughs> face and person as well what is she going to be able to do i know that, they told me i'll smile at rule of law issues <laughs> okay so i i mean now what how do you view uh the uganda's uh profession legal profession right now what is your take are there things that have changed what what, what is your you know perspective having served specifically on those, yeah. those issues i think the legal profession is one of the most <laughs> misunderstood professions mm. first of all it's one of the oldest professions in, in the, the world. world yes 
Mm. Um, and it's one of the most noble mm. because it was it started out with the rich the rich um what should i say the rich who had something to give to give back mm -hmm. uh for instance if i if if i were um rich or if claire privileged claire is a is is is, is, a, is a, okay not claire not mm. those days there's no room for women Let's say John. John. Let me give an example. Henry. John. <laughs> Sir John oh, owns yes. land. Mm. But they used to own land and the people who were squatters on their land were mm. like serfs. Mm -hmm. So you would have uh, the serfs living on your land. Mm. But if serf A um, has a child and maybe another lord dead somewhere. from somewhere comes and does something to this child and serf A wants justice, there was no room for serfs to get justice yeah. mm -hmm. but lord john mm. would go to the king and say i am standing on behalf of surf a oh. let the other guy get the other lord compensate surf a wow so that's why they were called pleaders mm -hmm. and and they were like saviors they were like superheroes advocates you know mm. they were advocates mm. and that's the oldest profession and that's how it's supposed to be and later on when it grew into solicitors and other people you'd find that this is a guy who holds the family secrets who holds the family together the family they want to be in the room mm -hmm. but you know mm -hmm. i think you've seen these mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. but it has evolved because of commercialism and capitalism capitalism yeah and uh, i'm sorry to say this but the american shack mm -hmm. lawyer mm -hmm. kind of thing that we see on tv has also ruined the the, the, the legal practice. profession All right. because it has inspired maybe wrong elements mm -hmm. to join the profession <laughs> or it has inspired lawyers to, to do wrong things. Wrong things. Yeah. But uh, yeah. we also have a growing clientele of crooks. <laughs> I'm sorry wow. to say, of very of, of very nefarious people. Because it's usually uh, people also think that the legal profession is there for criminals. Indeed. So it's usually criminals who mm. go, for who lawyers, go for lawyers, who pay lawyers, who pay them a who want lawyers to do certain things. Uh -huh. And yet uh, there's a lot of work that lawyers do that mm. people don't know out mm. there. Mm. So it has evolved into something else. But uh, prior to 2016, in, in my law society, uh, we had a quite conservative law society that was, you know, content in doing their mandates. Mm -hmm. You know, you'd see them, rule of law. As a, as a young lawyer, I started at law school and I remember I participated in one of the demonstrations on campus. Uh, well, I think the dean had declared that uh, all fourth year students who carried papers would have to sit a whole year so i participated in that it was successful and it they was canceled successful it. yeah mm -hmm. even though i wasn't carrying a paper <laughs> i remember <laughs> that i said you yeah yeah but i'm very proud of my class okay because every year they participated in some demonstration mm. or other not strikes mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. were always mm -hmm. you know engaged fighting in for activism. something yeah, yeah. Mm. so getting out of there um i started participating in the law society i remember mm. Uh, when the black mambas attacked court and we went and sat down in our gowns you wow. know, and did that demonstration. I was there. Oh, you were there. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> right now my mom is probably finding this out now. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I was involved in a lot of those things. Okay. And uh, I remember we went to Chigali in 2015 and they were going to pass a mutual recognition agreement, which is an agreement for all lawyers in East Africa. Mm. But lawyers, Ugandan lawyers had not read it. So I stood up and said, we are not going to, to sign this thing we've not read, you know, and cause a bit of chaos. Mm. And then President Ruth came and told me, you know, you should come and volunteer in the Law Society. We need someone like you. I said, OK. So I started volunteering for events and small wow. things. Wow. wow. And then mm. um, 2016, I stood to be secretary. Why did I want to be secretary? I thought the Law Society needed a, a face, face lift. I had just I was in PR. So I thought, you know, there's something I can add, add to, value this. To, to this. So place, I yeah. mm. became secretary, which was surprising. I was running against a very formidable opponent. Mm. Mm. So I remember this being need driven. I thought um, I can contribute to the brand. Mm. And President Gimara, you know, had At all these bright it ideas. Was Gimara. Yes. yes, yes. So I got in as secretary and we did social media. Mm. We did so many other things. Uh, <clears throat> that I'm really excited about. Mm -hmm. But as I was in there, 
uh, I discovered, oh, ULS has a huge legal aid project. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of our donors was leaving and the VP is in charge of legal aid. So I said, okay, I'll stand for VP because I can use my PR to get mm -hmm. some funding. Mm -hmm. um, as God would have it, when I became VP, we were able, instead of losing seven legal aid clinics, to get seven more. In the country. Uh, yes. So we now had 23 districts. So actually, and hold it right there. Yeah. This coming to the law presidency was not a new thing to you. You had worked underneath someone. I had been, I'd been mentored. Ah. I had worked under two presidents. Mm -hmm. Actually, three if you count Ruth. Wow. Um, I think that, uh, yeah, it was a journey that mm. I didn't see coming. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, when I was running for VP, all I wanted to do was contribute to legal aid. Wow. And we did grow it. Wow. But I can I... attest to that because <laughs> right now the law legal aid projects across the country seem yes. to be quite, quite many. Quite and reachable. Yeah. 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 Unfortunately, yeah. one of our donors is leaving again. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah. I am confident that with the work they've seen, mm -hmm. uh, others will join us. Mm -hmm. So, um, COVID hit new things came up new yeah. challenges mm -hmm. and and then i had this this thing that you know i think i can contribute to changing the way the law society is uh the covid period divided us a lot mm -hmm. so there were lawyers in civil society there were lawyers in um, corporate practice. corporate practice there yeah. were lawyers in government practice there were lawyers in private practice uh -huh. then academia and, and uh diaspora diaspora yeah. and i had been in academia, corporate, government, civil society. So I felt that, and I'm private practice. So Ooh. I felt, you know, mm -hmm. I'm probably the president who can unite, unite these everybody people. everybody else, yeah. So for that is really, that was one of the biggest goals of me running for office. Mm -hmm. I thought that mm -hmm. I had a voice uh, that could call these people to realize that we need to unite in order to be relevant to the ordinary Muntua ah. see. We cannot be busy fighting ourselves, okay. fighting each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm very happy to see that uh, when I became president, all our committees had representation from all these people. From all these people. For the first time, our conferences have had our diasporian members. Uh -huh. We actually had a lot of diasporian members coming back because now we introduce online trainings okay. and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Government lawyers have now come back. You know, usually they hide under the attorney general's uh -huh. practice certificates, but mm -hmm. I'm glad even the attorney general is paying for his members to join the law society. Oh. Um, we also had uh, lawyers who had trained abroad but could not practice here. Mm -hmm. And as president, you sit on law council. So one of the things I, I really advocated for, and I want to thank the law council for helping us with that, is that they passed regulations that allowed all Commonwealth trained lawyers to practice in Uganda to enroll. Wow. So for me, those mm. were big, uh, mm. big steps. Yeah. But one of the, there, there are some things that I also got into. I wanted lawyers to be protected. It, mm. it was funny that uh, we have a huge legal aid project. We do pro bono services. But when our lawyers are arrested or human rights defenders are arrested, they didn't have services. Mm. So that's the one thing that I wanted to do. And wow. coming in, uh, we were able to do that. We set wow. up a task force to assist lawyers mm. and human rights defenders. Mm. And we set up a helpline for lawyers because we had helplines for ordinary people. but. Lawyers needed help, mm -hmm. and you, I think you saw it with the arrest of people like Nicholas Opio, Ambrose Teviasa. Uh, then we also needed to engage the, the 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 forces, the security forces, because the the impact and the persecution of our lawyers was really getting out of hand. Of course, hand. you came at a time when the things were very very tight in the country, very tight, and like very challenging. Very challenging. I, it's always funny why women are brought in at the most difficult times. <laughs> Somehow God yeah, has a I way was, of doing it told yeah. God, you know, this could have been easier. <laughs> <laughs> Not in this time. But you know what? Sometimes mm. I think God sets that as a background Probably. to show off uh -huh. because we were able mm. to, we, we were able to do election, to do election observations that mm. come out with a good report. Mm. We were able to do a task force actually of a hundred people to help people. Uh, we were able to rescue about 103 um, in terms of, of those people aid. who had disappeared. Uh -huh. Do you remember people who oh, disappeared yes. after the elections? Mm. But we also um, released an election compendium to help anybody who wanted to use that for court and everything to, to, you know. Wow. But I think for me, one of the biggest things that blew my mind is that in a COVID year, we were able to build a house. 
For ULS. For ULS. You have a house now. We have a house now. It's wow. still in construction. Ooh. But that was huge. That was for huge. me to see lawyers come together mm. at a time when they had an excuse to say we are sick, we are this, we are that, we are broke. They came together and built a house. A house. Wow. And and it didn't matter from which side they were coming. Mm -hmm. And that that's a uniting factor. And you're talking about the NSSF thing, how yeah. you were able to provide cover, I think, or something uh, for lawyers. Yes. Mm. No, our staff, mm. you know, our staff had certain benefits mm -hmm. they didn't have, mm. like medical insurance oh. and meals, mm. and were able to do that. But we also negotiated very cheap medical cover oh, for our lawyers. Because yes. we lost a lot of lawyers mm -hmm. during COVID. And we realized that each of us is like a, a, a sickness away from bankruptcy. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So we, we partnered with Ken Bright Insurance and were able to get up to $70. You could mm. get cover and mm. a year. And, and wow. for me, that was like super affordable. That was very good. Uh, mm. And I was also thinking about young female lawyers like me. I mean, OK, I'm not young now, but <laughs> being a young joining girl. Joining the profession. Uh, being, joining well. in the profession, especially in private practice. Mm. Very few law firms can afford medical cover for you for mm. maternity leave and mm. stuff like that. Mm. So this medical insurance now gives this lawyer, the law firm now will not mind paying 70 uh, or something, yeah. a few yeah. dollars yeah. more yeah. for you. Mm. So the other thing that came out of COVID was our, our lawyers didn't have offices. Some mm -hmm. of the offices had been locked because of rent. Oh. So we were able to partner with Crane Management Services. There were a lot of big, beautiful big. buildings that okay. were empty oh. in Kampala. So we said, you know, give our lawyers, our law Space. firms, mm. six months free of ah. charge, the first six months. Okay. And do free partitioning. Wow. And we got that deal for lawyers. Wow. Yeah. So it cool. became cool mm -hmm. to be a lawyer mm -hmm. because you had all these, you know, you had a, you had a plethora of benefits to get from. But uh, this was also picking from what we had started in to President Gimara mm, and President Shinobe's time, ooh. trying to, mm. to increase member value. Mm. Uh, but even as we increased member value, we kept partnering with PSFU, with Uganda Kingdom, so that we increase the value to the Muntua 1C. Muntua 1C. We needed to reach out because during COVID, uh, apart from the usual rights of, of, of human rights, civil, political, mm. we also had uh, serious uh, economic, economic rights. Economic livelihood that, issues. Yes, yeah. livelihood issues that mm. came out of COVID. So we said, no, 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 let's provide some free business advisory services mm. for SMEs. Mm. Mm. Uh, they're, they're, they're not surviving. Uh, let's also help them uh, formalize so that they can get access to these economic recovery wow. uh, funds that were being put out there that UDB could not give anybody who wasn't formalized. Mm. And that's how we set up three business centers. And uh, I'm very happy to say that we were able to even establish ourselves uh, <clears throat> as, as, as a brand internationally. And, and we had organizations like the International Bar Association uh, giving us money for legal aid. We had uh, now, you know, uh, we, we sit on the East African Business Council. Mm, mm. We, we are contributing to the negotiations on the East African community. Okay. And I think for me, um, it came from the inside out. Mm -hmm. And I thought that the way we worked on ourselves inside, the the fixing power, ourselves, yes. the medical insurance, mm. those little things, mm. uh, fixing our relationship with the security organs so that they stop arresting our lawyers in, in such because a way. Because you're doing and, your you know, work. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Trying to patch ourselves up internally helped uh. us become strong enough to mm. be relevant mm. to the ordinary person externally. Working collectively. Yeah. The power amongst many of you, not yeah. just you alone as an no. individual. Oh, and, and yeah. you know I'm a coward. <laughs> <laughs> so every time I'd show up at a police station to rescue somebody, I'm so glad that there'd be like Several 40 others. lawyers yes, present. just there. Uh -huh. If I hadn't had those guys, I'd have <laughs> scrum, I'd have run, you know? Okay. So, so I... I can say that they say there is the law no society lawyer. carried yeah. me. Okay. They, they supported us. Mm -hmm. My council was the most supportive council I have ever worked with. I can tell wow. you. They were with me all the way, 10 of them. We would argue, we would fight, we would, but if I made a decision, they would all back would me. All back. And mm -hmm. I do not know what I did to deserve that up wow. to this day. I, I think I'll die owing those guys. But there's a feeling that the time is too short. 
I could see you are counting the many, you know, things that you have done in terms Girl, of Girl, I have grey hair. <laughs> it's <laughs> not too short. One, yeah, I know. It's a lot of work. Would more of you. Yes, maybe it can team. be said that for, for strategic purposes, it's short. Mm. But I think that if, if we have a leadership, that is committed mm -hmm. because you see the law set is not just the president and the council we have committees mm -hmm. we have uh clusters clusters so the committee is alone about 400 people Ooh. so if this leadership of the law society can say that yes like we the the strategic plan i worked on, on. Mm -hmm. in in gimara's time started in gimara's time so it was 2016 to 2021 okay and 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 three presidents have worked on worked that on the same thing the strategic yes. plan we have another one that's coming out mm -hmm. three presidents will probably work Again, on it yeah but if we have that other foundation of those committees i think that it's not too short it is not too but short. on the other hand imagine if you had a terrible leader i think that we should not give people too much power for too long mm -hmm. um even a good leader will become stale i mean really yeah <laughs> let's move on we're four th we are four thousand make lawyers. your contribution let's and get move opportunities on. to other oh, people that's interesting yeah okay madam president uh, emeritus i yeah. i would like just to capture your perspective about generally the challenges of the legal profession in terms of women what gaps do you see what more can women you know do how can we make use of the platform better? um mm. i'm also privileged to say yeah. that on uh, during our term the international bar association did a, a gender study mm. on the uls mm -hmm. and it's on our website okay. on uls.or.ug mm. and that study t reveals many things it reveals that much as the same number of boys and girls get into law school not the same number come out one because there's a lot of problems and issues that come along the way. Education, uh, legal education is very expensive. Very also. expensive. And sometimes women are still Caught falling up with that. so many yeah. things. Yeah. Then you yeah. have the issue of livelihood. So yeah. when you get into the profession, because of things like maternity leave, uh -huh. etc., mm -hmm. not being available and things like that, a lot of women, you'll find that three quarters of the legal professionals are in government uh -huh. and other areas but not legal not, not legal private practice, legal private. practice okay mm. uh out of about 1500 law firms we have about only 200 that are female-led is that so yeah wow. so mm. you find that uh legal practice is still a man's world mm -hmm. not because men have kicked us out but mm. because the circumstances are not the very favorable to women yeah so of course, when I was VP, we introduced uh, the sexual anti-sexual harassment policy. Sexual harassment is a huge thing in Uganda. I mean, look at everywhere, the 38,000 girls that were yeah, yeah. defiled. But <clears throat> now in the workplace, it's huge everywhere. I mean, mm. in, in the UK in 2016, yeah. about 80% of the women interviewed had been sexually harassed. Mm. So sexual harassment is huge in the legal profession globally. Even in other sectors. Yeah, but you know, lawyers Uganda. are supposed to be fighting for people's <laughs> rights in this area. So it's such uh -huh. a sad thing and an oxymoron that controversy. That it's controversy. Yeah. So it's a real wound that mm -hmm. we need to clean out. Mm. Uh, there are other things, for instance, um, you we have programs that look like very good programs, like the female lawyers something. Yes. But then that sometimes ends up having female lawyers only involved in that that they not in other yes other so so sometimes areas. i, I mm. well i've always been that person who doesn't want things defined by gender uh-huh i uh -huh. want i want equal opportunity equal i opportunities. want opportunities you know like yes right now parliament boasts that 30 percent of them are women mm. but it's because that is the the number uh, that's affirmative uh, that's the affirmative action and most of them are going for only the women's seats that's very there disappointing. Are very few women who go for men male seats. dominated seats. And that's because there's also this impression that that is for women. Uh -huh. mm? mm. You're a woman, why don't you go for a woman mm -hmm. MP? Why are you disturbing mm -hmm. us in these other things? Mm -hmm. So I want to encourage, uh, I want to applaud, you know, our National Youth MP is a woman, you mm -hmm. know, namesake. So I want to encourage uh, women out there 
first of all you already have the emotional intelligence that people are looking for in the in the boardroom mm -hmm. you already have the iq the you have the skills because mm. the fact that you're looking after your siblings everything we we are skilled to lead and to serve from birth from birth <laughs> we're servant leaders and that's what this country this world needs okay. so i'd encourage them step up mm. right now mm. the this parish model yeah. is going to be managed 100 million is going to be managed by lc3 county parish have you run for your lc3 office and you know or you're just giving it to some random person in the neighborhood you don't mm. know so mm. let's mm. get up let's organize so you're encouraging women in the legal profession to spread out as Not well on, yes even in legal the profession other areas because see the well. legal profession is mm. training leaders for other professions mm -hmm. because what I have learned is that parliament needs lawyers. Yes. Government needs lawyers. Mm -hmm. The judiciary, actually, a whole arm of government is about lawyers. Mm -hmm. So we need to equip ourselves for leadership. Let's study more, read more, read more. Uh, be teachable, mm. expose yourself, yeah. write stories, yes. uh, write articles. Right now, the, 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 the COP27 is all about cancel ECOP, you wow. know, wow. the East African Crude yes. Oil Pipeline. Yes. This yes. is not the conversation we should let we anyone having, have yeah, when we are us. mothers mm -hmm. and we are sisters mm -hmm. and we know that finally we have a resource that could enrich our country. Yeah. Women write articles mm -hmm. from civil society, from law, from everywhere. Write, how does this impact us? How do you think oil impacts uh, the future? Impacts the future. Mm -hmm. How do we avoid the oil curse? Because mm -hmm. yes, they have some concerns. But then how do we learn from countries like Botswana that mm -hmm. have done well? Mm -hmm. How do we... Let's, as women, get into these conversations. They affect our livelihoods. They affect our children. But now we have no excuse. Mm. We are very educated. Mm. Thanks to UPE and yes. USE, I agree. we have mm. Mm. some of the most educated women. When even, even the Geneva Convention, when I was really, really young, I remember, mm. Mm. Uganda had some of the most, the, the Matembes and, you know, these very are some of the most women. educated, yes. exposed yeah, women. Yeah, yeah. So mm. with a country like this that has a constitution that empowers women, mm. that has a land law that empowers women, how can we get together and and participate more in, 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 in the governance of our people? Shaping our destiny. In shaping our yeah. destiny. Yeah. In participating in the development agenda of this country. Wow. Yeah. Wow, that's very powerful. And uh, I think that's the area really we, we wanted you to you know, try to speak towards because then yeah. uh, if we see more women in the legal profession, we see more women. But the women are very powerful. Do you know women? <laughs> uh, There's someone who was saying that uh, that women have contributed to President Yorim Seveni being president all these years. All his life. They are like his greatest <laughs> support. Support. Yeah, yeah. So if you want, uh, if you want to realize how, how powerful women are, they are 50% of this country, mm -hmm. but 52% of, of all population. agricultural oh. produce oh, yes. is contributed to by women. 57% mm -hmm. mm. of all industrial produce is contributed to by women. When you go to all those SMEs. sugar works and what, 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 mm. they're using women. Mm. Mm. SMEs, uh, we, one of the most amazing things is that our population is under 15. Like half of our population very, is very, under 15. Very bad statistics. And half of these are women. Yeah. Mm. So what we need to be very intentional in getting in certain spaces. Education, we have sexual offenders mm. who are headmasters, teachers, and we women know these people are there. Why don't we open cases out to them? Mm. Why don't we write to law society and expose these people so that we do not have sexual offenders working in our schools mm -hmm. and destroying the future of our future female leaders? You know, there is a study that says that uh, there is more earning for a country when women are delayed in marriage. In other words, their potential is harvested more. If you send women to marriage early, at an early age, <sighs> then individuals lose, the country loses, the families. Absolutely, yeah, because yeah. you see, uh, these days, by the way, girls are marrying later mm -hmm. because of education and exposure. Yeah. But imagine if, let, let's, let's just imagine a very patriarchal society like we have. Yes. Uh, if Fiona is educated and she's at home, her husband knows that he can go to work, chase his dreams, be as big as he wants to be, because the children are not going to get sick from the communicable diseases, the mm. non-communicable diseases, because Fiona boils her water. Clean. She, Fiona educates the children. Yeah. Fiona ensures you're raising leaders mm -hmm. when you empower women. Absolutely. So 
this country needs to be more deliberate also on, on this agenda. And we need to, to, to because you know the sexual offenders bill came out and everybody complained about all the things that were wrong with it. Yeah. But the sexual the, the, the sex offenders register for me is very important, well, very especially important. for adult offenders. Mm. Because we want to know that you will not teach in a school if you have been caught sodomizing a boy, if you've been caught uh, impregnating children. In the past. I mean, you saw what happened to St. Lawrence. Mm. That just showed us what we are tolerating in our country. In our and yet we are here every day talking about women empowerment. And Uganda is getting all these marks. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the 16 sustainable development goals, all of them, women are the backbone have of linkage. making them happen. Oh, yeah. mm. So why don't we uh, ensure that we have, for instance, a place like the Law Society, why was it such a surprise that, oh, finally 50% <laughs> of the council was women? Women, yeah. Well, they were so shocked that now the council is all men. Again? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm told so the campaign There's only so one bad. woman. Yeah. So what I'm saying mm. is, why, why is that a shock? And why doesn't an organization like the Law Society have a law that says, let's 50% of the council mm -hmm. be women, mm -hmm. or let at least three be women? Because mm -hmm. we are still at a stage where we still need a leg up in, in, when it comes to positions mm -hmm. of leadership. We should not have a cabinet. Right now, President Seven is very positive He's about leading, appointing example, women. Right. But mm. if we got a president tomorrow who is all about men, mm. there's no law that says cabinet should have half women, half, you know, it doesn't. Well, there's mm. no law that, so I think we need to, and, and now me, I want to go beyond gender and mm -hmm. go to diversity. Mm -hmm. People with disabilities, mm -hmm. you know, uh, youth. Inclusion. These are people that have been intentionally excluded mm. from a lot mm. we have a cabinet now that is getting younger because parliament is the, the, the well. people of uganda decided to throw out old parliamentarians <laughs> but barring that we were going to just have the same old thing I know. we have mm. organizations if you see our organizations they're being led by very very old people mm. who are going nowhere mm. Mm -hmm. Mm. and young people have no chance mm no jobs mm. because people are also scared of their retirement so we need to ensure that we have programs for the old mm -hmm. we have programs for the young, young as we well. have programs for the disabled yeah. we have programs for women mm. i know it's sad to put women in that category but we're still there we still need it so yeah. diversity is extremely important very important yeah very important I think you've made very fundamental points already that I would have asked you later <laughs> in the interview. And so we are doing very well. So I'd like to move on to a point, looking at the type of person you are, the profile, the many things that you're doing, in your contribution to society at various levels. Mm -hmm. You are a mediator, you are an advocate <laughs> of high court, you are public relations advocate, you know, professional practitioner. You are a social worker in, in a way, I could <laughs> say. <laughs> you have to manage yourself besides managing other people and leading mm. so of course a key a quick question would be how you manage the will of life how do you balance That's different you know i always say i mm. don't balance uh -huh. i don't mm. and i don't think any woman should be put on pressure to balance mm -hmm. i think the issue is to prioritize prioritize at any one point you have to choose mm -hmm. the order of things okay so if if your god comes first then your family then it has to be reflected mm. as women when we get busy mm. sometimes we get messed up mm. uh, and i've had moments where all my priorities are out of work and i know it and i am depressed by the way sometimes men or other women make derogatory remarks about women they're like oh her marriage failed mm -hmm. ah, mm -hmm. what did she think did she, she was think? chasing power you know how come uh-huh all the men whose marriages have failed, nobody's blaming their no job. One does. Nobody's no one. blaming mm. their friends or their other things that they chose to do. But to the pursue. woman. Mm. But the woman, oh my God, you know, how could she choose work? Mm. She did not choose work. Mm. She had to work. And while she was working, she maybe dropped some balls, <laughs> but maybe it's not even her fault mm. because there's tooth to tango. I know. So what I'm saying is, mm. I don't think. Because no one asks President Museveni how he balances. How he balances. Nobody should ask Madame Mama Janet how she balances. Uh -huh. But I think the issue is, as women, it's very important for us because we we lead with our hearts. Mm. We we want to make sure that our insides are okay. Okay. Before we can 
oh. be okay outside. Uh -huh. So prioritize the inside. Look after you. Okay. Look after your home. Look oh. after your relationship with oh. God. Because leading is very lonely. Mm. So we are, when you're out there and you don't stand for something, you fall for anything. So have values. Wow. Build your inner person. Invest Around in that. that. Create a social, what do you call it? A social, like, sorry, a support backbone, system. Support system mm. Around you. Get your mentors, get your parents, get your family. Find a way of making them a part of your journey. Oh. Oh. Let your children know that your success is not a threat to your, your time with them. With them. Let your spouse know that, you know, it's difficult. I, I will not lie. I know colleagues who've even lost marriages because of this thing. But when you look at the situation, you're like, it's life. Mm. It's it life. Happens. What, life happens. Who says that? How yeah. many How many housewives have had broken marriages? There are many. Mm. So things can happen. But mm. what, I'm, what am I saying? Fix. You, you inside wow. so that you have the firmness to stand outside when the wind comes mm -hmm. you know uh when you are when you are in leadership you will not have a lot of time so if you did spend a lot of time with your family and invested in them earlier wow if you and now i want to encourage young girls get your families <laughs> early they're not going to get in the way of your success at all because now we have well worked women well careered women who are struggling with birth you know giving birth and because fertility you issues that. because you over postponed mm. at the end of the day this these things are important to all of us so if you do want to have children and get married and if you can do it just prioritize wow the other thing i wanted to say is once you know who you are mm -hmm. build your brand by being faithful and consistent oh. faithful to who you are to what you stand for that's because wisdom. it will be tested at mm. every point mm. Mm. when you learn someone said it's the bible when you're faithful in the little things you shall be faithful in the, in bigger, the bigger things, things. Okay. if you cannot mm. steal five thousand you will not steal fifty thousand wow so build your character mm. in being faithful to your values mm. from a small place then be available for wow. service wow be wow. available for service. You don't have to be present of the law society to be of value. Mm -hmm. You can be, you can be of service anywhere you are. I, I remember when I was a, a young girl on campus, I had so many friends and mentors who are married and they would want date night. I would go and babysit for them. You know, <laughs> <laughs> there are there are, there are little things mm -hmm. that you can do to be of service to people that will expose you to mentors. You wow. know. Wow. So be available wow. and then be teachable. Wow. Sit at people's feet. Mm. Sit at someone's feet. Such a humble spirit. And get hacks. Wow. And so mm. if you're busy yeah. and you get are help. like me, mm -hmm. you will have a vegetable guy. Uh -huh. You'll have a border guy who can do anything for, for you. you. You will have, you'll train the guard to cook in case the maid goes away. Uh -huh. You will do those hacks that, that help you. I know people say I don't eat microwave mm -hmm, food, mm -hmm. and I'm like, good for you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Others have to survive. Some of us, <laughs> we don't have extended families where you you're know? going to call on Auntie So and So to come and cook my toke when the maid has Over gone the and you're not home. Or you know. Okay. So mm -hmm. what I'm saying is, embrace technology, mm -hmm. hack, mm -hmm. meet, be, be, have friends like you, <laughs> and ask for advice. Okay. Ask for help. How do we manage? Yeah. yeah. Well, I think mental are, health. Mental lastly, health is very important, yes. Mm. Because we are in a different dimension right now. Everything is just on us. Mm. Then we have the mobile phones and we have all these things. And then it's really, really lonely sometimes. It's such a lonely world it and is. you don't know how lonely it is mm. because we don't meet we don't as meet. much as we yeah. used to. We don't. Mm. Mm. So mental health is a real thing. It is. Take care of your mental health. What do I mean? It's not, Jesus said, it's not what enters a man's mouth, but That's what comes important. out. What comes so what out. are you speaking to yourself? What negative things are you exposing yourself to? What terrible things are you, are you exposing your on? body to? Okay. You know, mm. I'm also speaking to myself here, eating badly. Uh -huh. uh, we also have people who abuse right now because of perf the, the urge to perform. Mm. We have women who have learned to use drugs and performance enhancement, enhancement. Uh, drugs and and this performance is i want to stay awake longer so i can read harder even in the ah. loss, even in the legal profession <laughs> i want to 
to win that case. So, so I, I must to, read hard and I want to do a lot yes. of yeah. Then I'm going to party hard, ah. you know, because now I also have to impress wow. on the youth scale wow. and how wow. my Insta has mm. to be all up mm. there with, with things. Mm. I have to go to Nyege Nyege mm. and, ex, and, and you know, and then, and then on Monday I have to be at work mm -hmm. and do this. These are things that we do and we forget that we are human. Mm -hmm. You have one body and one soul and one soul. <laughs> So, so don't, don't, don't use it like a toilet. Uh -huh. Don't let it be a dumping ground for stuff. Wow. Because you need, um, I think it's John Maxwell said that delegate the things that can be delegated so that your mind is free to dream. Uh -huh. Your mind is free to heal other people. Uh -huh. Your mind is free to develop ideas, to, ideas. for your children. Oh, yes. Don't fill your mind with negative, negative things, things. With, with chaos, mm. with soaps, mm. with... Yeah, now I'm talking to myself and my wow, Netflix wow. addiction, but yes, <laughs> but let's it's a relaxer. be jealous. Yeah, but yeah, it's a relaxer. Yeah. But what's relaxing? Mm -hmm. Because if you watch 28 episodes over a night, and you don't rest, and remember that one thing that really scared me because I love my brain, <laughs> like I, I, I just think you realize that your whole identity is what's in your mind about yourself. Uh -huh. So if you woke up today and you had Alzheimer's, you would not know who you are. You wouldn't. You would not you be would you. forgotten. You would not even know uh, your favorite yeah, food. Yeah. So mm. that's how powerful and important the brain is. Wow. And the brain needs eight hours of sleep mm -hmm. to repair mm -hmm. itself. Because mm -hmm. while you're pushing all these things in it, it's it breaking. It's getting torn, it's getting wow. stretched, it's getting... Mm. So let's feed our brain the right food. Mm -hmm. Let's feed our brain. <laughs> Listen to Dr. Kasenene, I'm doing Kalango for him. <laughs> I, I have not been a good listener, but you know, it's you I'm in a journey. It now. I'm okay. trying. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, let's remember that this body is the only license we have to be present yeah, in this world. Earth. Wow, so let's be jealous powerful. about it. I mean, we could have a longer conversation with you. Yeah. You have so much <laughs> wisdom in you in these few years of life that you've lived in here. And I get so many things that we could learn from you. Yeah. I'm sure our, our viewer is going to pick one or two things here and there from your journey. We've mm -hmm. not even exhausted it. No, but we have. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to ask you one last question in terms of where next we could see you. You know, uh, we've, we've had a lot about you, we could read a lot, but is there more that we could look forward to? That, yeah, well, yeah. Um, mm. on this journey of following and leading, yeah, I mm. have, um, we started a leadership institute. It's That's called awesome. the Fidelis Leadership Institute. Wow. It's based on the faithful, available, teachable principle. Hey. That was my mantra when I was running for president. Oh, you're doing something good. Yeah, so we're trying to raise ethical leaders mm. for Africa. Wow. We want to be able to impact young people. We have what we call a FAT fellowship. It's mm -hmm. an eight uh, week, uh, eight month uh, fellowship, mm. uh, which um, equips you to position yourself for success, to prioritize, to, to get ahead. Mm -hmm. And we also help you using social capital to get you exposed and, and make sure that you have sort of an accelerated growth because you are ethical. Oh, yes. Mm. And then, you know, teach you the necessary life skills. Uh, then we also have uh, fat talks. Uh, wow. We want we want something for Africa, wow. similar to TED talks, but fat talks uh, about how can you make it in life and while you're ethical. Because these days it looks like only the wicked prosper and want to create a different, very, uh, a very different conversation yeah. and a different rhetoric. Yeah. Mm. Um, lastly, we have uh, we do executive coaching mm. for CEOs mm. and strategic planning mm. and management and governance uh, training for boards and uh, I think our goal is to ensure that we we, we firm up the insides of, of our ah, African so. people oh, yeah. of our African organizations so that because Africa is the last frontier wow. like this is where all the resources the human resources, the, the, the gold and all those things are, ah, the water, the land. Yeah. This is where everything is, even health. I mean, look at COVID, mm. even health now mm -hmm. is here. Mm. And it's the greatest last resource that we have left. Every other continent, sorry, every other, yeah, every other, con uh, what is it called? Yeah, continent, continent. Is, mm. is, is overflowing and people are coming here. Back to Africa. 
but they have to find us ready mm -hmm. and equipped mm -hmm. to participate mm -hmm. in, in everything that's happening on the continent, not to be wow. observers. Wow. Like we were in trees while they were building. You know, when you see the streets in 1960 here. In Europe. No, here in Uganda, in Kampala. Yeah. In 1950, mm -hmm. there was curfew for black people in Kampala. Imagine. They could not find you on the streets in the 50s. This was... So we were there in the trees watching as people develop themselves in our place. I mean. We need to be part of this. ECOP, what does it mean? How do we participate? Uh, the, the continental free trade area, how, how is it normal that Madvani sends roses to Norway and Ghana buys roses from Norway? Instead of here. So we need to, I, I feel that the Fidelis Leadership Institute wants to create leaders that are very intentional in observing, seeing, identifying these opportunities, linkages, creating linkages mm. all over Africa to yeah. make sure that the young people are part of the conversation. We want to force ourselves into this conversation wow. and be Sounds relevant. so, so exciting. Fiona, so that's I really what I'd love, love to, to do, do for the rest of, of my life. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. And I think God has put in you so many things <laughs> that need to be utilized and brought out. I was very lucky as a young people. person to yeah. have people pouring to me. Mm -hmm. So now with we everything to... God has given me, I yeah. want to get other people like me to pour mm. into our next generation. That is the right thing to do yeah. because as we wind up, of course, it's been said you cannot be a successful leader mm. without mentoring others. Mm. So. The numbers and the people that you have grown and mentored are a direct reflection of how your They're leadership actually has instructors in the, in the institute. All right. Yeah. We've got to go. I hope that we can get you another time and uh, we continue this Fidelis Academy right here yeah. because this is all about leadership exactly. as well. So yeah. thank you for giving us your time and we hope that we can continue in this journey of coaching, mentoring other leaders because thank it's you. the passion we share. Yeah. Thank you so much, our viewer. Uh, of course, we've had Fiona, Wall, uh, I did not ask her about her wall name, but it's all <laughs> over the media now. You can be able to know because that's a, a sticky question. People yeah. ask wall, wall here and there. But the better it's, half it's of me. The, better the best half, half of, of Fiona, me. Yeah. Yes. So we've got to go. We'll see you on another program. Shalom.